of worship for when you cannot see him. How to worship God when he's not seen. When you can't feel him, when you can't see him, when you can't sense him, when he cannot talk to you. How to worship God when he cannot be seen. The unseen God. Yes. As a Christian, how to worship God when how to worship the unseen God is what we are going to talk about. But first of all, let's pray that God will reveal to us his word and will will, will make sense of it in our lives. We're going to read from Isaiah. We're going to read from Isaiah chapter eight, verse seventeen, <coughs> to begin with. <coughs> Isaiah. Chapter 8, verse 17. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. And I will wait upon the Lord that hide his face from the house of Jacob. I will look for him. These are the words of Isaiah the prophet. He says that I will wait upon the Lord that hide his face from the house of Jacob and I will look for him. Automatically this reveals to us that God can hide. God can hide his face from his people. God can hide, can hide his face from his people irrespective of what they have done, whether they have sinned against him or not, he can still hide his face from his people for any reason, for his own known reasons. He can hide his face from his people. It is, it is, it is, it is easy to worship God when we can hear from him, when we can talk to him, when we can ask him anything and he gives to us, when he's keeping his promises all the time, when he, he's, he's answering prayers immediately, it is very easy to worship God. It is very easy to worship God then because we have no reason why we are not worshiping him. But there's a time when we have no reason to worship God inside. As human beings, we feel there is no reason why we should worship God. Or we feel like, is really God there? Is he looking at me? Is he real? 
But we should keep in mind that God is real. No matter what we are going through, God is real. No matter what we are going through. And he keeps his promises no matter what we are going through. When we have food, we have shelter, we have good health, we have abundant happiness, we have peace of mind, it is very easy to worship God. It is very easy to worship God because you say, God, you are worthy to be praised because you have given me peace of mind. Thank you, God, because you have spoken to me this and that. Thank you, God, for healing my, my children. Thank you, God, for healing me. Thank you, God, for giving me good health. Thank you, God, for doing this and the other because we are giving testimony and it is easy to worship God. But how then can we worship the unseen God? How then can we worship God? The God that we have cried for through the whole year and there is no response. How can we worship that God? That is what we are going to look at. In every Christian life, in every Christian journey, they must pass through that kind of experience. They must pass through that kind of experience. Because the Bible says that you are my friends if you obey me. So if you do if you do what I command you to do. So when we, we, we start doing what God wants us to do, we become his friend. That when we are born again mm. and we decide to obey God, we become his friends. And when we become his friends, he tests that relationship, that friendship, by hiding from us. Like in any other friendship that we may have, any relationship, I can call it a relationship, like in any relationship that we can have anywhere, we can have a relationship with God just the same way we can have it with people because we are created in God's image. Now look, if you are, if you are, to, if you are to test a relationship, that if, if you are to test whether a relationship you have with a friend or with a, with a spouse is healthy, you may test it with a distance. And in every relationship, there is, a, there, is a, there is a time of distance and there is a time of, of being together. There is a time when you are together and there is a time of distance. There is a time when you are going to work and you are not together. There's a time when there is an assignment and both of you are not together. And there's a time when you are all together. So the time you test whether this friendship or relationship is healthy is the time that you are not together. How each of you will behave. Whether each of you, whether one of you will give up, whether one of you will whether, whether all of you will be patient, whether all of you will, will be communicating, whether anything that happens during that time is what tests whether this friendship or relationship is healthy. Most relationships are tested by distance. Most friendships are tested by distance. Hmm? That's why you see that when you meet a friend that you had spent like two years without seeing, the first thing they'll tell you that, oh, you, 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 you ignored me or you abandoned me. They'll first accuse you. They say, you abandoned me. Not even a call, not even that, not even this. You have abandoned me. Maybe you have chucked me. Maybe you, you, you have abandoned me. You don't like me anymore. Or am I still your friend? Let me hope I'm still your friend. Because, because of this distance, they, they think that you no longer, you no longer, you no longer, the, the friendship is no longer working. Because of this communication, they think that the friendship is no longer working. Because of this, of this, everything that happened, it may bring to their mind uh, uh, this, uh, a whisper that maybe I'm no longer so important in their lives. That's why they are not calling me. Or that's why, or maybe I'm, we are no longer friends. Or maybe they got other friends that are better than me. That is the distance. That, that is the way we test relationships and friendship. If you live 
if you live as, as, as couples, if you live if you live distant from each other for a long time, that's the way you will test your friendship, your, 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 your relationship. That's when you will know that, oh, this one is trustworthy or this one is not. That's when you know that this one is tired of this distance and this silence and everything, so this is what is going to happen. That's when you will know that you can be strong and patient and wait for each other and wait for the time until you are back together. That's when you will know, you will test the patience, the value, the position that you are. If you are living far from someone, that's when you, you, you like for married people, that's when you will know that this kind of person is very patient. That's when you will know that this kind of person, uh, I'm, I'm in such and such a position in his heart or in her heart that they cannot give me up even if it means 14 years or 20 years of distance. So that is how exactly God tests the relationship that we have with him. When we get saved, we are like babies who are suckling the breasts. We are like baby Christians who are suckling the breasts. But God gives us, God gives, during that time, God gives us everything that we need. During that first, those first days, we find everything kind of simple, although we are still complaining because we don't know what we are going through. We don't know what we have come to. We still complain. But God, during that time, even answers some babish and serious prayers for us. Because he wants us to know that he is present, he wants he wants us to know he's present. He wants us to know he, he wants us to know that he exists. Because we are still babies, we don't know what is happening. We don't know what is. God can rescue us, hold our hand all the time, move with us, mm. for us to know that he exists. But when we start to grow, when we start to mature, he wins us. Huh? like a parent would do to a child. And when, and when we are weaned, sometimes we will not even know that God is around us. That is when we begin fasting, praying, and it doesn't make sense. We cry to God, we pray, we do all sorts of spiritual things to be in good mutual relationship with God, but we find out that this is all not making sense at all. You can wake up in the morning and you find that you don't have even time. You don't have even the feelings. But time is there, but you don't have the time. You feel there is no time, but time is there. You feel you want to be busy and hide somewhere because you don't want to remember that you have been crying to God and he's not answering you. You want, you want to, to talk to God, but you feel you, are, you have no feelings to talk to him. So you are worn out. You are tired. Like so many people, we are very tired. Mm. But they knew. They were, they were tired of what they were doing, of what was happening. They were tired of the situation, but they were not tired of God, like David. So all this I'm saying to, to, to explain that God hides himself intentionally. Not because we have sinned. Sometimes, yes, sin can bring, can hide God's face. Like we shall see, sin can hide God's face from you. But it's not always sin when he hides himself from you. When you feel he cannot be seen, it is not always seen. Sometimes it is his intention to help you grow and to see if you can worship him in truth and in spirit, even when he is not seen. The deepest worship that we can give God is that worship when he is not seen. 
the deepest worship that we can give God is thanking him and praising him when we cannot feel him, when we cannot see him like Job did. That is the deepest worship that we can give God. So let us read the word of God and see what it says. God does not want us. God's intention is not us to feel him all the time. No. His intention is us to feel him, to, to trust him. He doesn't want us to feel him. That is not his intention, that we should be feeling, feeling, feeling God all the time. But his intention wants us to wash, to trust him no matter what. To have to, to, to trust him. You saw Abraham trusted God. Mm. Noah trusted God. Like we are saying yesterday, blessed are those who believe without seeing. That's what God wants us to do. He does not want us to see him all the time because he will not know how much we can trust him. And our trust in God, that's what steers up God's actions. Our faith in God is what steers up God's actions. So the level of our faith, the level of our trust is the feedback that we get from God. So that is what he's always wanting to, to test and know what we are. So let us see how we are going to see how God chose David. Like he has chosen uh, some of us or all of us. And uh, what happened later? How God chose David. And what happened later after he chose him. Because sometimes when he hides his face, we may think that maybe God did not call me to do this. Mm. Some people, when you are evangelizing, or even when you are like a, 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 a Christian leader or a church leader, and God hides his face from you, you may think that maybe God did not call me. Maybe I, I called myself. Maybe I called myself into doing this and it was God was not aware and was not in this. But God may hide his face to see your faith. So let us see how God called David. Hmm? In First Samuel chapter 13 verse 14, it says, it says that, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded you. That, that is when the Lord was rejecting Saul and was choosing David. He said, I have choos chosen a man that is after my heart. So God choosing David after his heart did not stop David, did not stop him, God, from hiding his face from David. God is choosing David. God is choosing David and, and confirming that he is a man after his own heart did not stop God from hiding his face from David. So like any one of us, like any one of us have been chosen to do any task that God has, has put in our, in, our, in, our, in our hands does not mean that he will keep, we will keep feeling him because that is not his intention of us to keep feeling him all the time, but to trust him. Let us see Acts chapter 13, verse 22. It says that, And when he had removed him, that is Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. So God chose David and he called him and testified on him and said that he is a man after his own heart and even gave him the blessing to fulfill, to accomplish his will. But that does not guarantee David 
that he will be filling God 24-7. That one did not guarantee David that he will be seeing God all the time that he needs him. That did not guarantee David that he will be. So every time he prays his prayer, it will be answered immediately. Just because he, God had chosen him and appointed him to be ruler, captain of his people, and to accomplish his will. Mm -hmm. And he had even testified that he was a man after his own heart. That was not any guarantee that David, every time he prays to God, God will listen to him. Or every time he, 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 he asks for anything, God will just give it to him immediately. Or God will not hide his face from David. God hid his face from David, as we are going to see. Even though he was called and anointed by God, it was not a guarantee that he would feel God all the time. So the same way, it is not a guarantee for us that we would feel God all the time. Because it is not his intention that we will feel him all the time. But his intention is we will trust him all the time. Because this is what pleases him. To trust him no matter the circumstances. God is real no matter the circumstances. Because, because, because the circumstances cannot change the character of God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 that he will not leave us alone. He promises that I will not leave you alone nor forsake you. So the circumstances that we go through cannot change the character of God. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Hebrews 13, still, he says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because that, that proves to us that he must fulfill his promises. Whether he is seen, whether he is felt by us, no matter the circumstance, God cannot, God's character cannot change. Because he created everything. He created even all those circumstances. Everything becomes becomes be, becomes because of him so how can they change him nothing can change him but he can change everything mm. so let us read <coughs> and see what happened to david we should learn one thing that during this time when god is hiding from us we must be real we must not pretend we must be real to god because even if we are real or not real God knows everything that is happening in our lives. So we must be real and we must show God that, that this is how we are feeling. We must tell him how we feel because he's, 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 he's our father. We call him our father in heaven. Like you, tell, you can tell your father how you feel. Like you can tell your father how you feel. Whether you are sick, you're feeling sickly, you're feeling disappointed. That's the same way you should tell God. If, you, if, you, if the same feelings you have is the same expression you should express to God during this time when he hides his face mm. from you. Of course, the fathers of this world cannot be the best examples because some of them may not listen, but God is a true father who listens, who understands. And the most important thing is during this time when he's hiding his face from us, he is watching us. He is not closing his eyes. Hmm? There's a difference between hiding your face and, and ignoring or closing your eyes. He's not closing his eyes. It's like you hide from a child and keep watching them from a distance. They are not watching you, but you're watching them every step they take. And when they are, they are completely worn out, you can hold their hand. You can reach out and hold their hand and help them. That is how God does it. So let us read on Psalm, Psalms of David, chapter 10, verse 1, and see how David, how David went through this same, this same, this same situation. It says, Why standest, why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Hmm? Mm. 
David is crying to God because the wicked had triumphed, the wicked people. God had had hidden his face and the wicked people were 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 proud and were taking over. And David cried to God and said, Why hidest thy why standest thou far afar? Say, why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? But David was weak. He was asking God, God, why are you hiding at this crucial time? Why don't you come and help us? Eh? That is how real we should be. But this statement that David made shows that God was hiding. So that shows that God, he could not see God during that time. Like we read before, like we read before in Isaiah, how the prophet was, was saying that God who hides from, from his, his people, God who hides from Jacob, God who hides from his people. It shows that God can hide from his people. So this is this is this is this this statement that David made here shows that God, that he could not see God when he was in trouble. The same way he there is times when we are in trouble and we cannot sense that God is even present, but he is watching us from afar. Look, why standest thou afar off? Eh? It is better to stand afar off and watch me than close your eyes completely and be blessed. So this one shows us that God is hiding from us but is watching us. Because by someone standing afar off, it means that they are standing afar off but they are seeing you. They are just not standing near you. Are you getting me? Let's, 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 let's see 22. Psalms 22. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why hast thou? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the word of my roaring? Eh? You see those words? David was being real and went through this situation. So by God appointing him and anointing him, king over his people and 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 giving him responsibility that his family lineage is where the messiah will come from and he will fulfill his will and being a man after god's heart did not only did not guarantee that god will keep around him all the time being being fed by him he will not feel his presence 24 7. so the same way we sh that one should never let us feel down or despise our anointing or despise everything that God has given us just because we cannot feel his presence. Because the devil can tell you that God did not anoint you. Mm. Hey, the devil can tell you that God did not anoint you. God did not bring you up. You must have thought of this yourself. You must have brought yourself into this situation because you remember properly. God did not choose you. And you will start despising the anointing you have because you want to feel the presence of God 24 7. Eh? Hmm? He's saying that, Why hast thou forsaken me? Hmm? Hmm? In, 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 in Psalms 43, verse 2, he says, for thou, for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Eh? Sometimes we go mourning because of the, the oppression of the enemy. The, the, the real enemies and the real enemy and the artificial enemies that the devil has made our enemies. Because we have these artificial enemies who are human beings that the devil has, has made artificial enemies for us. But there is the real enemy who is the devil. And and we can we can go mourning because of the because of the oppression of the real enemy or these artificial enemies that have just been made. But when God is watching us, just hiding and seeing how we are going to go over this situation, how we are going to handle this situation, when, 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 you're, when you're married, your parents are not going to follow you to help you to sort out your issues with your, 
your 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 spouse but they will stand and watch you from a distance and see what you are going through if you are completely worn out they can come in and help you and say this is like this this they do this like that if it is like this do this and that but they will not follow you to your house to say now decide to do this now decide to do that now decide to do this no because you have been weaned you have been respected before taught and weaned now let's see in Psalm 74 11 we are seeing that how David went through these situations and how he handled them first of all we are realizing that he became real to God and told him exactly how he felt mm -hmm. 74 11 Psalms why withdrawest thou thine hand even thy right hand plucketh out of thy bosom hmm? he's calling God that God why have you folded your hand and put it in your chest? Please, get it out and hold me again. He's feeling that God has folded his hand and is, has not outstretched his mighty hand to get him out of, 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 the, of, 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 of the mockery of his enemies. Hmm? Hmm? So David was becoming real. David became real and told God of how he felt. If you see Psalms 88 verse 14, it says, Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? Hmm? There are so many Psalms that we can read that show us that really David passed through the situation of God hiding his face from him. But we cannot read them all and finish them. But now we can see the promise of God. Because God's character cannot change, cannot be changed by a situation or a circumstance. But, but the circumstance can be changed by God's character. This, the circumstances that we are going through, like our, the enemies, our enemies' triumph, oppression from the enemy, they cannot change God's character. But God's character can change those situations. So the, the, the vice versa, the reverse is true. Let us read Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. And the Lord... And the Lord he and the Lord he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fall thee, fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. I read it again. And the Lord he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not neither be dismayed mm. Mm? this is God's character that we are looking at now because God's character is seen from God's promises so if God says if God's character says that he will not fail us neither forsake us he is telling us to fear not or, or be dismayed how then can we fear and be dismayed when he's hiding our face so the most important thing when he's hiding his face from us is to remember his character if we remember the character of God during this time when we are in when we feel forsaken automatically we become strong and we know that God's, this situation will not change God's character. If you are going through a situation, just say, this situation cannot change God's character. That's enough. If you say, this situation cannot change God's character. If you say, what I'm seeing, what I'm going through, my pain cannot change God's character. Because God tells me to fear not and neither be dismayed. He says, he will not fail me. Hmm? That is Deuteronomy 31.8. 
Mm. Knowing God's character is mm. a weapon for us to overcome this this dryness. It's called spiritual dryness. Some people call it spiritual dryness. When you feel that God is not there, what you're doing is all dry. And you may start blaming yourself that maybe I've sinned against God. You may repent and repent and repent. And think of anything and repent. Just start repenting even things that are not there. Thinking that maybe God must be annoyed with me. When he's not even annoyed with you. But he has weaned you. And he's helping you to grow. He's helping you to trust him without feeling him. He's helping you to believe without seeing. Let us read on. Psalms 37 verse 28. This is the same David. This is the same David who was complaining that why has the Lord hidden his face from him? Why has he left his, his enemies to triumph? But let us see what David says now in Psalms 37, 28. Mm. For the Lord loves judgment and, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So this tells us that he fulfills his promise. Because the person who does say the previous words if we hear him say these same words here that means that the situation has changed so proving that the, the situation cannot change the character of God but God's character changes the situation eh? let us read John fourteen sixteen. John Fourteen sixteen says that and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you I will not leave you comfortless I would come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but you see me because I live you shall live also mm. are you getting that that is a promise that is God's character so God's character should remind us that the situation that that we are in is less is is less is, is powerless, is less strong than, than God's character. So if God's character is saying that he will not leave us alone, but he will pray to the Father to give him, to give us a comforter, even the spirit of truth, which the world does not have, but for us we shall have the spirit of truth. And for him he's saying that the world will see him no more, but we will see him. So, that means that he will not forsake us. He will not leave us alone. He will be with us. That is his character. So no matter what we go through, we should always remember that God's character is stronger than the situation. It's stronger than this situation of spiritual dryness that we are in. Hmm? If, you read, if you read Hebrews 13, verse 5, it also says that I will never leave you alone. No forsake you. Hmm? I will never li leave you alone nor forsake you. Hmm? It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I would never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hmm? He will never leave us alone nor forsake us. And in, and in verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. That he does not change. His character, he does not change. So how then can the situation of spiritual dryness change him? If he cannot change, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. How then 
Can he say that he will never leave us and forsake us and then leave us again? Because he does not change. He does not repent. So when we feel, we cannot see him. We cannot feel him. His character. His promises can make us move on. And the most important thing is, why don't we remember the things that he has done for us? It is also very important that during this time, we should remember the things that he has done for us. We should remember, we should remember the past things that he has done for us. We should remember the testimony. If God has got you, has got you out of the den of lions. How then, if you are, you are thrown in the furnace of fire, will you forget that he got you out of the den of lions and start complaining that now you are in the furnace of fire and start losing hope? But if he got you out of the den of lions, then he will get you out of the furnace of fire. Mm. So our past experiences with God remind us of his character and if we are reminded of God's character it makes it builds our faith and we become strong and we rely on God's character and promises instead of relying on the situation because if we rely on this situation we lose hope and when we lose hope we fail because the word fear and faith are directly related. If you fear, you fail. If you fear like this, you fail completely. Because and the first weapon that the enemy brings to you is fear. Because you know fear causes failure. If you go if you go if you go if you go to an examination room with fear, that is registered failure automatically. So fear brings failure. We should not fear. That's why the, 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 the God himself tells us in Deuteronomy 31.8 that do not fear or be dismayed for I am the Lord. I will not fail thee. I will be with thee. Those are his words. So how can then we doubt his character? How can we compromise God's character with just a situation? So look, we have, we have, God is more concerned about how we feel. How we feel. He's more concerned. He's very concerned about how we feel. So we, 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 we are not doing wrong when we tell him, Lord, I am fe feeling like this, I'm feeling like that. But Lord, I'm trusting you. He wants us to trust him no matter how we feel. But he also, he also wants to know how we feel. He wants us to, to be honest and say, God, I am feeling like this. But I know you can rescue me. God, I am feeling very low, but I know that you are the Lord of hosts who got me out of the den of lions, and you will now rescue me from this furnace of fire. Hmm? So we should tell God how we feel. We should focus on God regardless of the situation and the circumstances. We should trust his promises. We should trust him to keep his promises. We should trust God to keep his promises because he has promised. He will fulfill because he has promised and he has fulfilled before. If he has promised and he has fulfilled before to thousands and thousands of people, of, 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 of his people who, who love him, what about us? If he has shown mercy to thousands and thousands of people who trust him, what about us? Because he says that I will show mercy to thousands of those who love me. Eh? To thousands of those who love me. He says that I will visit the iniquity of fathers to the fourth and to the fifth generation of those who hate me. So if our enemies try to mock us or try to confront us on different issues, we do not value that situation. For us, we value God's character. It's a God's character. He's a God 
who visits the iniquity of fathers to the fourth and to the fifth generation of those who hate him. And he's the one who shows mercy to thousands of those who love him. So, basically, he will show us mercy and he will visit the iniquity of those who hate him. Because those who hate us, hate him. Because those who hate him, hate us. He said that you are not of this world. Those who hate me, they will hate you because you are not of this world. Because they will not have loved you because you, are, you don't belong to this world. So, for us, we should trust, the, the, we should not look at the circumstances. We should look at the bigness of our God, not the bigness of our circumstances. We should look at the character of our God, not the situation, not the circumstance. Hmm? We should remember what God has done for us before. And most of all, most of all, we should know one thing. Even if God does not do for us any other thing, even if God does not do for us any other thing, what he has done so far is enough. What he has done so far is enough by bringing, by giving out his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not die but have everlasting life. So what he has already done is enough. It is enough to thank him even if he does not do any other thing. It is enough to thank God for, 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 for letting Jesus Christ die for us. Even if he does not do any other thing until he dies. Do you know that? Just because Jesus Christ died for us, we should thank God even if he does not give us food, even if he does not give us clothes, even if he does not give us, even if we starve to death, we should always thank God that Jesus Christ died for us because we are going to hell. When you say, Lord, forgive me, he forgives you. In Psalms 51, David is saying, forgive me. He's, t he's talking to God to forgive him after he, had, he had slept with, with, uh, with, uh, with Beth Sheba. Let's just read that and finish up. He was, uh, he was asking God, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. If we acknowledge our transgression, he, God is ready to forgive us. In Isaiah 43, 25, it says that he is the Lord who blots out our transgressions and can remember our sins no more. He says that, that come let us reason together even if your sins are as red as crimson, I will forgive you. I will cleanse you and you'll be white as snow. You will be, you will be as white as wool. In Isaiah 118, he tells us that he's ready to forgive us. He's ready to do that. So that is just enough. Being ready to forgive us, giving us that grace through Jesus Christ is, re is just ready enough evidence that ready enough gift that we should always thank God no matter what we are going through, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, no matter ev anything, we should always thank God. We did not go to Job, but Job still went through all these things. Job all also went through all these things, but, but he thanked God. No matter what he was going through, he thanked God. Eh? He thanked God. He said that let's read job 120 just job 120 as we are winding up let's read job 120 and see how he thanked god that the deepest the deepest the deepest worship that we can give god is when we worship him no matter the circumstance no matter what we are going through is that deepest worship that we can we can give god when we worship him no matter what we are going through 
Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked come I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all that in all this job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. In all this job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We should remember never not to sin or charge God foolishly in this kind of situation, although we are allowed to tell God how we feel, but we should remember never to sin or to charge God foolishly. Because the devil can use, the enemy can use this situation to make us charge God foolishly or to sin. So we should never allow the enemy to take advantage of us to sin against God through this situation of God hiding his face. Because God's intention is us to learn, to trust him, to believe without sin. So his intention for us is to be victorious in this situation. But the devil's intention is to be failures. Because he wants us to be, he wants to cause fear during this situation by whispering nothing, how God has abandoned us and everything, so that we can fail. But God promises that I will never fail you. That leads me to other scriptures like uh, in, 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 Efe, in um, Ephesians, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in Ephesians 4.29, we shall see how we should not use this situation. We should not use this situation uh, carelessly because we may sin against God. The Bible says that Job did not sin in this situation and did not charge God foolishly. Mm? So let's see Ephesians 4.29. It says that let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth huh? mm. but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Ghost of, of God whereby you, sh you are sealed unto the day of redemption because if we go through this situation we should make sure that we should not utter out foolish words or charge God foolishly so we can grieve the Holy Ghost in us and, and that God, that Jesus Christ promised in John 14, 16. He promised that he will give us a comforter. He shall not leave, it, leave us alone. But how then, if we grieve that comforter, what shall we be left with? Huh? Uh -huh. In First Thessalonians, Thessalonians, chapter, chapter 4, no, chapter 5, verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 says that quench not the spirit despise not professing prophesying prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from the most important thing is quench not the spirit 519 quench not the spirit make sure that during this situation of spiritual dryness Quench not the spirit, because this spirit is your comforter that Jesus Christ has promised in John 14, 16. So, if you quench the spirit and you grieve the spirit, what will you have for your comforter? Because he said, I will not leave you alone. I'll give you my spirit of truth. So how will you, what will you be left with? Huh? What, what, will, what, will you, what will you have? What will you what will, will you be left with? Let's read First Corinthians chapter eight verse twelve. First Corinthians eight twelve as we finish. First Corinthians eight twelve as we finish. First Corinthians eight twelve says that but when you sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. So those words that we add out during this time of spiritual dryness, oh, God has forsaken me, oh, oh, what, 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 what. Make sure that we don't charge God foolishly and we don't sin. Because when we say these words and the, the, 
and our weak brothers hear these words, we have sinned against our brothers and we have sinned against Christ. Mm. So we should be careful with our mouth because our mouth can cause trouble mm. and the devil can use our mouth to cause trouble and this trouble will affect us. Let us thank God for the word. ask God to help us trust him even when we cannot see him. We ask God to help us trust him when we cannot see him. To help us believe without sin and stand strong in this period when he takes in that so that the devil will not use this situation to to, to, to yes to the devil will not use this situation to overpower us and cause us to sin. Thank you.